What's an audiogram, Nick? So an audiogram gets into one of the interesting things about our field, which is that we overlap with another type of doctor. So the audiogram is done by an audiologist. That's usually somebody with a doctorate in audiology um, that's even more specifically trained in that type of a, of a process. So what happens is I take the patient over to our audiologist, we have a little introduction, and then what they do is they play a series of sounds through special different types of headphones, um, and the patient simply says, yes, I can hear that, no, I cannot hear that. Um, and as they proceed through the test, what the audiologist will build for me um, is a little pictorial representation, so just a little graph, of what kind of hearing that patient has. So what can that tell you? If you've got the audiogram where they've been able to identify certain levels of noise that sure. comes through, what does it tell you, the doctor, about that patient? So it's where the part of my job that it turns completely into pattern recognition. So there's some types of hearing loss that are just classic. So somebody with presbycusis, like you said, which is typically what we think of as age-related or noise exposure-related hearing loss, will have a very classic pattern where they have some decrease in high frequency, which is really high-pitched noises. Think, is that the first thing that usually goes, high frequency it is. in most people? That tends to be the hair cells of the cochlea that are the most sensitive to either noise exposure or to age. And so with time, those are the ones that tend to kind of drop off first. So is that why I can't hear my wife real good sometimes? Because she has more of a high-pitched, soft voice? It might be, and it might, and it's the reason that we don't hear dog whistles. That's the very highest pitch, and it's the reason that little kids can hear these sounds that we sometimes can't hear at the very highest pitches. So that's a common finding. It is. Uh, what else does it tell you? What so, are their patterns? So sometimes there's patterns that we call asymmetry. So that would be where somebody comes in, they say, ah, I'm not hearing as well. And then I get an audiogram and one side hears very well and one side hears very, very poorly. And that might be more concerning for some other type of process. And so you have to, you know, hopefully have somebody that can pick up on that and say, you know, I think we'd like to get an MRI. 